video session on data link layer framing methods. Myself, Professor Vipul Kondekar from Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. These are the learning outcomes of this video session. So, student will be able to identify why we need framing at data link layer as well describe operation of different framing techniques. In this video session, these are the contents we will have introduction and we will go through the need of framing and then different framing methods. We will try to understand different framing methods. Now what do you mean by frame? Frame is basically a data link layer entity. At data link layer, framing is done. Framing is nothing but dividing the data into manageable data units. Manageable in the sense, we know that if you are sending the data, that data goes from data link layer to the physical layer. Now, we, what we want is, we want to divide the data in such a way that physical layer could manage that data transfer entity. So, we call that manageable data unit as frame. Now, let us go for understanding different framing methods. So, first framing method is character count framing method. Now, what happens in the character count is if we assume that what data you are sending is having fixed number of character size, fixed bit length is there for every character. In that case, if you are sending let us say ASCII character, how I do the framing is start of every frame will be a character count. Let us say I start the frame with character count as 5. It indicates that the first frame has 5 different characters including this character count. So, let us say after this 5 what comes is 4, 3, 2, 1. Let us say again it is 3, 2, 4, 4, 1, 2, 3. These are the characters sent by the technique character count framing method. So, how exactly frames are considered? So, first will be the character count and it indicates that in the first frame there are 5 different characters including this. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this will be a frame number 1. This will be considered as frame number 1. Now, next character count is 3. So, next frame has 3 characters. So, this will be frame number 2 and this will be frame number 3. But this is the simplest technique of forming the frames. But the problem with this framing technique is assume that the frame count itself gets garbled. Let us say phi u, phi u its binary representation will be 0, 1, 0, 1. Let us say one single bit error occurs in the character count itself and then instead of this one, your character count is becoming 0, 1, let us say 0, 0. What it indicates? The character count is 4 and in that case at the receiver side what will be the interpretation made? If this bit has garbled, one bit in the character count has garbled, so it will consider that there are 4 bits, 4 characters in the frame. So, it, this will be considered as frame number 1. Then one character in frame 2, so this will be considered as frame number 2 three characters, so like this. So, the synchronization is totally lost if the character count itself gets garbled. This is the drawback of the technique called character count for the framing. Second method of framing is flag byte with byte stuffing framing method. Now, the drawback of character count is character count gets garbled, we cannot achieve the synchronization at the receiver side. So, to remove this drawback, what we do is, we use a flag byte at the start as well as flag byte at the end. And then, there may be some header information, tailor information and then actual payload field. So, this is how a frame will be formed if you are using this technique. Now, flag byte will be some bit combination that may be if a one byte flag is there that may be some bit combination let us say bit combination is 1111111111. One, 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 one. 
Now, we know that the payload field can take any value, especially when you are doing the transmission of the floating point data, it is highly possible that the flag characters are flag bit combinations are appearing in the payload field itself. Now, if it is appearing in the payload field, so if the receiver makes its interpretation as the flag bit itself, again there will be problem in the receiving frames correctly. So what is done to remove that drawback of appearance of the flag character in the payload field, what is done at the transmitter side is transmitter makes the use of some escape character. Now what transmitter does is when it is transmitting the data, when it is for checking the payload field, if it finds that escape character itself is there in the payload field, what actually gets sent is escape characters for two times or if flag byte is appearing in the payload field, what actually gets sent is before that flag byte one escape character is sent. Let us take some examples that when you are transmitting the data by this technique, how these escape characters are stuffed. If you are having data where A and B are the data characters and data itself is having flag value. So what actually gets sent is you will be sending A, then escape character, then flag and B. Okay. If the data itself has escape character, what you will be sending? A, then escape character, again escape character and B. If data has this combination, escape flag, so what you will be sending is A, then escape, escape and then one escape character again, flag and B. On the same lines, if that data has A, escape, escape combination, means this combination is there, actually what gets sent is A escape character, again escape character to nullify this effect and then again escape character, escape character and B. So this is how the stuffing is done of the escape character in the payload field so that receiver should not have any confusion that actually payload field is a flag byte or not or it is escape byte or not. So this is the second method of framing called as flag byte with byte stuffing, byte stuffing you are making of escape characters because you know that the flag byte itself may appear in the payload field itself. Now we will go for third method of framing that is starting and ending flag with bit stuffing. What is the need of this method is if you go for flag byte or character count we assume that the payload field which you are sending is having fixed data width. All the characters, all the data has fixed length. But if the data itself has got variable length, then previous two methods cannot be used there. So what we do here is you will be having some starting or ending flag. That flag combination may be same. For example, you may have starting flag as let us say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0. So this is the combination I am using as starting or let us say same is used as the ending flag. So how you will do the framing? Start of frame will be this character combination as well as end of frame will be also by this same character combination. Now again we know that it is highly possible that when you are sending your data, data may take these values of starting flag or ending flag. In that case, what we need to do? What we need to do in that case is we will go for bit stuffing. Means when you are sending the data, let us say you are sending the data which has got these six number of zero. This is the part of data itself. Again, you are sending this combination zero. This is the data itself. Now this should not be interpreted as starting or ending flag. So what is done at the transmitter side is at the transmitter side what is done is stuffing is done. Stuffing of what? Bit. 
So what transmitter does is transmitter makes sure that never six consecutive ones will appear in your data. So if it finds that they are appearing, so what it will do is it will find that 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, next is 1. So six consecutive ones are appearing. So what is done is this 0 is stuffed. Okay, and then this will be 1, 0. Again, next will be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 5 ones are there. So, what gets the, what is done is again this 0 is stuffed and then this is 1, 0. So, this is what we can say stuffing. This is what we can say stuffed data. And now what is done at the receiver side is whenever it finds de-stuffing is done, de-stuffing is done at the receiver side. So what receiver does is after 5 consecutive ones, whatever 0 is received, so that 0 is neglected. So ultimately what receiver will receive is this 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 5 ones are there, after that 0 is there, so that gets neglected and after de-stuffing, again what you are going to get is the same data. So this is how the problem is solved of appearance of your starting or ending flag in the data itself. Otherwise, whatever is your data, whatever may be the size of the data, if it may be varying also, so that can be uh, that can be used to form a frame by using this particular technique called as starting and ending flag with bit stuff. And now the last method for framing is physical layer coding violations. Now what this method is, when you want to form the frame, usually you are sending the data and data when you are sending, so if you are sending single bit data, one simple way of sending that data is if you are sending one, so what you do is you transfer one for that particular high voltage, voltage for that bit duration or if you are sending data as zero, what you do is you transfer zero volt for that particular duration. But what is done is data encoding is done. So there can be one way of coding the data called as Manchester coding. In data formats, you might have studied these are the different coding techniques. So in Manchester coding, what is done is if you want to transfer one, then actually for half so this is the bit duration let us say, so for half bit duration high voltage is sent and for remaining half bit duration zero volt is sent. On the same line if you want to transmit data zero, so for half bit duration zero is sent and for remaining half bit duration one is sent. So this is called as Manchester coding. But what we can do is we can have violation of these coding techniques, so here Though you are sending 1, what actually gets sent is 1, 0. Though you are sending 0, what actually gets sent is 0, 1. So what we do is, to have this framing, we will violate this coding where the start of the frame may be indicated by 1 appearing for whole bit interval. Okay, So that will be considered as 1, 1 or that may be 0, 0. So if you are using Manchester coding and then in a bit interval you are finding 1, 1 or 0, 0, it indicates that this is the start or end of the frame. So at the end, can you find out which frame format, which framing technique is used for Ethernet? What is the frame format for that? As well, what is the maximum possible size of the frame? for the Ethernet. Remember, practically framing is done by making the use of one of these framing techniques along with the technique character count to make, to have extra safety in the transmission of the frames. These are the references used for this presentation. Thank you.